A recent Globe and Mail blog reported that women are more likely than men to get bored in a marriage. A series of Canadian studies show many once intimate relationships have lost their luster. They're dull, they lack fun and conversation, and are devoid of romance. Once a month or so, Dr. David McKenzie joins us to talk about such dilemmas. He is a couples counselor and sex therapist. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. David McKenzie back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. Well, study says yes. women are more likely to get bored in a relationship than men or in a married relationship. Mm -hmm. This was a study done by the Journal of um, um, Psychological Science, and they found that uh, women after marriage, uh, about the sixth year or so, tend to get uh, bored in their relationship. Men will get bored uh, prior to marriage if, there's no, if there are no nuptials coming down the line, if they haven't tied the knot. But after marriage, it's more women that get bored. And you can begin to understand that, especially if they have a child. We were talking about this before we went on air. Uh, a lot of women will give up a career. Uh, they're at home all day. They start to feel brain dead. And they have a husband who's coming home late, involved in the career, providing a nice lifestyle. And they start to disconnect. And she starts to feel as though she's raising the kids on her own. She's keeping the house while he goes and plays golf and does his thing mm -hmm. with his work. And so there, there's, there starts to have this disconnect in the relationship. And uh, they've lost the fun, the vitality that you were talking about in the introduction, and it becomes drudgery, it becomes dreary. And so um, you'll often find women mm. feeling that more than mm. men. But not dreary for him because he's still playing golf, well, uh, uh, playing soccer with the boys, going to the bar after work. Yeah. Uh, that, not always. Sometimes no. many men come home and take care of the babies and do what they do. But Actu Actually, most men do, uh, to be honest about it. But there are some who are still you know, living the single life while their wife does the work at home. Uh, what you'll often find, what I found in my therapy practice, is that you'll have a man and his wife is in collusion with this. They enjoy the nice lifestyle, the good income, it provides for her, blah, 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 blah. But he's having to work till 7, 8 o'clock at night. He has to go out on golf trips and eat dinners out with, to keep clients of coming. Of course he does. Well, no, uh, I'll <laughs> no, be I I'll, no, I'm honestly, there are a lot of men mm -hmm. out there that would rather be home playing with their children and watching TV with their wives right. than having to entertain people mm -hmm. from across the world. So. so how do you come together but remain apart? And by that I mean you have a life, he has a life, mm -hmm. and you have a fabulous life together. So when you come home, you're interesting. Yeah. Or when he comes home to you after your day with the kids, you're still interesting. And he's interesting, and that ziz, okay. and that if connection is still there, and you're happy when you see his car, or he's happy when he sees your car it's called driving scheduling. the driveway. It's called scheduling, and it's called creating distance in your relationship. So if there's too much intimacy, it kills passion. And a lot of couples mm. simply do not go out of the home. Like I'll say to couples, uh, do you have a date at least once every two weeks just with each other, not with friends or family? Walk the seawall. It doesn't have to be expensive. No, well, we have a date and we rent a movie and watch TV. Not good enough. It's got to be out of your common place where you live, move, and have your being. Make it exciting. Go out of the home. Do something exciting. Every week, each of you should have at least an evening or an afternoon where it's your mental health time. Mm. You can go out and do what you want. Mm -hmm. It's creating distance, creating interest in the relationship. So before the marriage, the couple uh, played golf together on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Yes. Once they were married, he played golf, she stayed home. What's that about? Well, there seems to be a lot of bias <laughs> towards the him. You know, right. He's the culprit and she's the poor little mm -hmm. woman at home. Um, uh, yeah, there, there does tend to be, there are more men who tend to do that, oftentimes because they're out in the world working and bringing the income in, where there are a lot of career women who have chosen to stay at home and look after mm -hmm. their children. I guess there's this tendency in me that I don't want to vilify males as though they're the big bad people right, and no. women are being mistreated by them. No, uh, not at all. It's, it's a female choice. That's exactly totally. right. Totally. And a new and a recent study out of Quebec showed that and Sweden showed that women want to marry a a rich man so that he can take care of them so they can be at home raising children. In Sweden, they did a massive study of women and found that women really want the traditional role of staying mm -hmm. at home and raising children, keeping home. Right. So, but they want a good income for that. 
So, well, um, apparently the new Duchess of Cambridge doesn't necessarily want to go out and uh, have a job job. She wants to uh, be with William sure. and uh, be, become a mom. Sure. Well, that's what the press says. Sure. We don't sure. know for sure. But uh, yeah. she really wants to have an ordinary yeah. life for yeah. now. Yeah. Her choice. But it is, I see, I think boredom is an individual problem. Somebody doesn't make you bored. Mm -hmm. You are bored, well, and, or you're but, not. But bored. the relationship can become tedious and boring, and mm -hmm. it becomes staid, and nothing exciting happens. And I say to couples, you need to sit down, get the calendar out of the month ahead, and schedule the times you're going to be with each other. Schedule the evenings you want to have sex with each other in long-term relationships. Really? Yes. The days are ew. over. <laughs> no, it's not new. <laughs> the days are over of meeting the stranger across a crowded room and having sex in your car. Mm -hmm. I mean, the long-term relationship. But that would spice up the relationship. Yeah. Well, I'll tell them once in a while, <laughs> go out in the car and after a date and have sex in the park mm. with a police officer down the road. We're on the That'll... way home from the party. <laughs> but those, I. I gotta say, in long-term relationships, that's a standard higher than angels can keep. In long-term relationships, sexuality takes on a different uh, experience and understanding than short-term relationships. Uh, uh, President Barack Obama and Michelle were on Oprah a couple yes. days ago, oh. and she said, you know, at, at first it's really easy and sparky, but when it, the going gets tough, and it will in every relationship, yep. and you have to work things out, that's when you really understand whether or not this person you're with is your friend, mm -hmm. Uh, somebody you are truly interested in, mm -hmm. because we're all interested in the beginning, yeah. aren't yeah, we? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mostly. in the first, uh, for people to judge their relationship based on the first three to six months of hot sex and so forth, they're, they're really walking uh, on a tightrope here. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot judge a relationship bef before about two years has elapsed, and then you begin to see how you're going to mesh with each other. Yes, it's always curious. People who say, "I, uh, we were friends for years." Mm -hmm. I knew him for years, mm -hmm. and one day, or one week, we fell madly in love. Hmm. It's always surprising to me that if you didn't have that ziz in yeah. the beginning, that after all these years of being true friends and having lots of fun together, you decide you want more. I know well, it happens. Yeah, I've, I've seen it happen too, but rarely. Um, most of the time, uh, I mean, Gottman says that friendship is the flower of the cake of marriage. Mm. If you haven't got a friendship, the relationship will not be healthy. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen many people who have a long-term, four-year relationship and are friends and suddenly fall in love. I know it's happened, right. but I don't see much yeah. of it. Yeah, but he gets me, I get him. Yeah, sure. That's, that's so important. Uh, Ice-T said it recently in an interview, the rapper, that <laughs> the right man comes along for a woman. It's the right time. If it's the right time, the right woman comes along for a man. Do you believe that? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. If a man comes into a female's life mm -hmm. the, and you're mad about him, you'll mm -hmm. drop things and go yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, for men, he said it's different. For him, uh, it had to be the right time. You know, the, yeah. it wasn't about the right woman. Mm -hmm. It just had to be the right time for him. He was not ready to settle down. And then, as luck would have it, when he was, the right woman came along. Well, um, I have a little different theory. I, I mm. you know, accept his experience of that. But right. um, I think when we're at the right time psychologically, when we've done enough work on ourselves, I mean, I've seen it over and over. Uh, a woman will come to me, and she's been attracting men who will abandon her and leave her mm. until I get her to work on her inner issues and her childhood issues and all that stuff that attracts abandoning men. When she starts to get it together, she's sending out subliminal signals that only the subconscious can pick up, and she starts attracting men who are decent and won't mm. do this to her. Okay, but do you think males think, you know, I'm 30 years old or I'm 35 years old, it's time I settle down. So I'll find someone to settle down with. Now's the time. Well, 77% of men are looking for a marriage partner when they date. And that spans... Really? Yes, that spans all, all, 20s and 30s and 40s. So it's not like women are out there looking for marriage partners. Men are too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are many men ready to settle down at 25, 26 years of age. Before that, I'm a little dicey about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> women, as, women are ready to settle down at 22. Men, As you should be a little <laughs> dicey about it. And, and we can't generalize, and you always say that. That's you know, right. you can't yeah. generalize. Everybody's yeah. certainly yeah. different. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when you're doing... Um, the romancing, you're in the dating game. Mm -hmm. It's always a question whether you should play hard to get, mm. wear your heart on your sleeve, mm. tell all, because you know how you feel inside, mm. but very often you think, if I tell him I love him madly on the second date, he'll leave, well, he'll an run. An article in the Scientific American recently actually uh, backed up the idea that if you play hard to get with a person you know who likes you, that person will even like you more. 
Okay. If you play hard to get with somebody that you're not sure of or who doesn't like you, you you won't end up getting him or her. Well, he'll let you go away because he doesn't, he doesn't care. He doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. But um, there there is some scientific data to back up the idea that, um, in fact, they, they took uh, college women and I had a lot of my colleagues dish the methodology in this, right. but they showed them Facebook images of men and showed, said that these four men are interested in you, but these two men are they're kind of they're not that interested. Mm -hmm. And the women obsessed with the men who are not that interested because they're thinking to themselves, well, what is it about me he doesn't like? And mm -hmm. the man's always on their mind, so they think if he's always on my mind, I must like him. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, the one running away is always more interesting than the one right. chasing. Right, and every female would wonder, and probably every male would wonder, how do you know if they really are that into you? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. do, do they call you a lot? Do mm -hmm. they uh, sparkle when you're in their presence? Do they send you flowers? What? Mm -hmm. You'll pick that up instinctively. Mm -hmm. uh, I Energy. Think Energy, yeah, um, just the, the tone of their voice when they answer the telephone, uh, various ways in which they show interest in you, invite you over, take you for a date, or, or you know, show initiative. In most cases, uh, women still want the man to initiate a phone call. Half mm -hmm. of all women do, or over half. Um, uh, uh, half of all women, uh, about 40% of women will insist on paying for their own way in the first date, but after that, 80% mm -hmm. want the man to pick up the check. Really? So yeah, or at least offer. Offer, yeah, that's right. So there's still this traditional thing going on. They want mm. the man to take the initiative. And mm. so, I mean, I think it's probably important that on a first date, um, a woman probably wait for the man to make an initiation. But if after three or four days have gone by and she really wants to hear, I think it's totally acceptable to right. phone a man up and say, what's going on? I'm interested. Sure. And where's the line? You say something like, I really like being with you. That sure. seems safe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed our last date. I was hoping that mm -hmm. maybe uh, we could... And if he says, well, I'm really busy and I'll be in touch with you, and then you know it's this. But if a man says, absolutely, I'm sorry, and he does initiate, then you know that there's interest there. Well, on social media, uh, there's a lot of texting going on, as you know, yes, new age. That's right. And you're that's not sure whether connect. you should, so they texted you. Does that mean you should text back, or should you wait a couple days, or should you wait two minutes? <laughs> right? No, don't wait two minutes. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I've never been one, even when I was single, I've never been one into games, you know, that I'll wait three days mm -hmm. and make them like me or make her like me more. Right. And uh, that plays with some people who are into those kind of games. Uh, but for the most part, um, who wants to be with somebody who's into game playing? Why, well, uh, nobody, I don't think. But you have to trust your gut. But then there's yeah. a part of you that's a little strategic. Absolutely. You know, you think, gee, am I sending him too many emails? Or yeah, you don't am I do texting that. him no, too much? Don't want to do am that. I driving him crazy, no, really? No. Yeah. Uh, respond to an email that's sent to you within, I think, a decent amount of time, say three, four hours, uh, or even right away. But don't be the one constantly texting back and so forth. Mm -hmm. Not too many. Not too many. Keep count. Yeah. Okay. If you, if you show too much interest, it starts. The interest starts mm -hmm. to wane. You know, the person. Well, elusive desperate. is always good, because then they yeah. wonder, wonder where she is, <laughs> or wonder where and he it's on is. Their mind. <laughs> exactly, and right. that's always good. <laughs> Dr. David McKenzie, our guest, will return.